Okay, so I have decided to do this um, live talk thing. I don't think anybody has done it first. You know, I have to be the first in everything I do, obviously. Yeah. Um, and we actually had supposed to have Randy come in today, but Randy had something happen and he couldn't make it. So I have my second best, Shane from Shed Lewis. Say hi, Shane. Hey guys, how are you? Um, as you know, Shed's a big name in Brisbane. Um, hopefully, big name all over Australia soon. Big name in Gold Coast. Yeah. Your, your lure sells very good, but um, we're probably not going to talk about fishing today. We'll talk, you know, we want to find out more about Shane. Yeah. Alright, are you single? No. Okay. Married, mate. Okay, sweet. I okay. So, um, you guys feel free to ask any questions. It will probably go on until I run out of stuff to say, which is never. Adam wants to know do you put out? For price, I put out. <laughs> okay, but anyway, okay, let's go. Okay, um, what do you want to know? What I want to know, Shane, uh, how do you start fishing? How did I start? Yeah, when did, okay, when was your first memory of a fish? Like, yeah, uh, uh, probably I'm born and raised in Canberra. So okay, no wonder. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Not much to do other than born fireworks and fish. Okay, uh, but no, being serious, um, fishing for trout. Probably my first memory. I haven't got uh, a trophy yet. Yeah, haven't you? No. Mate, I can show you a really good look at the cabinet. Okay, you can kill that. I'll yeah. do it yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright. But no, uh, fishing for trout in Lake Jindabyn was probably my first major spot that I actually, as a kid, grew okay. up fishing with Nathan, my brother, obviously. Yeah. Um, and dad going doing bait fishing, you know, sitting on the banks, campfires, and kind of freezer suits in minus three to minus five degrees weather. So yeah, okay. that was kind of my first experience, I guess, getting okay. fishing. Uh, if I wasn't playing footy, I was fishing. Okay, yeah. cool. So, um, so fishing for trout. So, yeah. and also I've heard, like you've told me before, that you used to fish in bass comps. Like that's way before my time. Brim yeah. comps, yeah, yeah. Brim comps, yeah. Comps. yeah brim I did comp. both. I did bass and brim. Okay. Um, and I did do a lot of brim comps. Yeah. I did a few bass comps. Yeah. Pretty well. Did you do well in the bass comps? I did actually. Yeah, one for one actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah so so you, you and you and your brother won. Nah, me and actually one of the other boys I fished with. Yeah. Oh, okay. One. So yeah, I won. The Oh, the Jackal comp actually, it was quite good. Oh, yeah, okay, your best friends, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Jackal, Australia, really, really good boys. Yeah, yeah. Not as good as Shads, but yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Right. Um. So that was your first fish. What is your favorite? What is your favorite kind of fishing though? You've done bream, you've done yeah. trout, you've done bass. You, I've seen you catch big snapper, reds. Um. I've seen you go to the belly and catch some things, but yeah. But so what is your kind of best kind of fishing, bro? You crabs. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's your lifestyle, not mine. I've yeah. um, been happily married for a long time. But yeah. no, uh, mate, fishing for snapper is my favourite. Fishing for the snapper, snapper is yeah. your favourite. I started in the Brisbane River fishing about 14 years ago, so I moved from. Brisbane yeah. River snappers? Yeah, fishing for snapper in the Brisbane, in Brisbane River. River. Yeah. I think in the wrong spot, bro. Nah, I don't think so, man. Okay. Some of those photos you'll see on Facebook, there's definitely a lot of Brisbane River. Brisbane River. Okay. What's the biggest snapper you caught in Brisbane River? 75. Okay, I beat you. Yeah, see, I don't believe it though. So. <laughs> I beat you. I'm not going to believe you. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brisbane River. Brisbane River, no, definitely. Uh, I started fishing for Jewfish, Threadfin Salmon, that type of is where I kind of started with. But okay. I'm obviously, it kind of got in through a bit of a phase from fishing for brim. Yep. And then obviously, kind of went from bigger and bigger and bigger and kind of upgraded my boats to do that. So okay. I can now chase marlin. I was out yesterday chasing blue marlin. Don't talk about how we went, but um, yep. you know, you know the, the theory was to okay. actually get out there and do it. So, so among all the sports you fish, right? Like, yep. I know you go to 1770 to fish. Yep. Um, I know you go to like like you say you come from Canberra. Yeah, Canberra. Canberra. Yeah. Where is your favorite spot? Like if you have to choose some place to die before you fish, yeah. to drop a lure, where will be the last place you want to drop a lure before a shark eats you? Uh, it'll be Mackay. Mackay. Yeah, definitely. Any Macaque. any place in Mackay? Yeah, yeah. There's a wreck that I like to fish with finger mark. Okay. Yeah. Oh, golden snapper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah sweet. They fight really hard. Those golden snappers. Golden ninety two. Off no, I don't believe. Where the photos? Just made some Facebook. <laughs> Jump on my Facebook, you'll see it. It's probably been my profile picture about ten okay. times. So yeah. Okay. So um. Okay. So Mackay. Yeah, and, uh, definitely what? chasing finger mark using a tough prawn. You know. That's, what a salesman. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mate, they just catch fish. So. <laughs> okay. Um. But no, that's honestly what I'd be doing. Uh, okay. If I had my last choice, like to be honest, if I turn 50, 60 when I decide to retire once Shad's is big enough and Cooper and take over and Zoe can take over. And the kids? Yeah, the yep. kids, yeah. Obviously Nathan um, has a little girl, Isla. Okay. Um, you know, once we decide to hang up the boots and yep. you know, that's probably where I'll end up, I reckon. Okay, so I just want to ask you a bit about, I mean, a bit personal and stuff yeah, like that, like yeah, uh, right. with the company you shared. So yep. how much do you own and how much does Nathan own? Or oh, how it's 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Um, okay. It's not just Shad's, obviously, as you know, we have 
heaps of other different brands that we do. Yeah. The exact F grade, you know, the multiple grade that we obviously sell in, in all your shops. Uh, we have our swim baits Australia, which is our timber um, swim baits. Yeah. yeah, designed for cod and you know for jewies and stuff like that as well. And the little hundred mil swim bait for threes and stuff like that when you fish a frizzy. But um, we've obviously now just expanded again and gone into a new range of anglerwear, which is a clothing brand from America, so which is pretty cool. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a really large brand over there. And, you know, hoodies and shirts and fishing yeah. shorts and stuff like that, all the stuff that we wear anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm going to quickly speak about how I actually know Nathan, right? Mm -hmm. Me and Nathan. I'm sorry Nathan, sorry, me and Shane, me and Shane, we're good we, looking brother. <laughs> me and Shane actually hated each other at one stage, like uh, when I first opened my store and uh, you know, you got all this Chinese whisper, you know, and me and Shane actually hated each other. And then one day, we never met each other, we never met each other, <laughs> we never spoken to each other, we just hated each other. And then I think Akram was working for me and yep. Mo, Irfan, yep. oh, what was I going to say, Ivan, you know, shadows are really, really good, why don't you get some? So I called Shane and was like, Hey Shane, I want some shared words. And then all of a sudden, we are like really, really good mates now. Like he's one of those guys that when I have a bad day, I call him and we have a good chat, you know, and we, you know, one of my really, really, I'll say suppliers that actually turned to be my really, really good friend. So Shane is really, really- But I'm still number two. You're still number two. <laughs> you're always number two, bro. <laughs> but, uh, Did you tell him what you said about him yesterday? Oh, no, he's number five. No, but anyway, um, they just Shane- had to replace me. Before. Yeah, so Shane, um, Shane is a person, like this is my opinion, right? He is a person that always has a really, really hard front. But uh, when you actually know him, like he comes into a shop thinking he's a big footy player, you know what I mean? Comes in, goes, where's my stock? Checks out his stock and stuff. But actually Shane has really, really got a really, really good heart. And he's that kind of person, if you are loyal to him and you're a friend to him, he'll be one of the most loyal friends that to have in this industry, I feel. So, yeah. So, you owe me 50 bucks. <laughs> Okay. So okay, so another question back to back to the interview. Another yeah. question, right? Is um, so what made you and your brother started Shed Lures? So Shane obviously owns Shed Lures. So yeah, what but, you and your brother? Why did you guys start Shed Lures? We were. And how did you guys do it? Well, it was to be honest. There's a long story to that. Um, we were using everybody else's lures, yeah. as everybody does. As were, you, were you sponsored by Jacko at one stage? Not really, no, okay. we just used those lures. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, but we used Atomics, we used pretty much everything. Like, yeah, yeah, we were doing yeah. a pretty concert with Jacko or Atomic or it was yeah. Very you know, Cranker or yeah. you know, everything yeah. else like that. And it was kind of what we used to do. Even the Berkeley MF40s so were the first ever soft five that come mm -hmm. out. We were using them and stuff like that as well, way before anything else. So, yeah. um, and before then, there was another one I can't remember. It was like a Kmart version. Like it used to work. Okay. Kokoda, that's what it was. It was the Kokoda. Kokoda. Yeah. Okay. And we used to use them. But anyway, fishing for us was always what we wanted to do. You know, when we stopped playing footy, Nathan and I, we both played footy. Um, and we just, you know, fished. That's what we did. Yeah. We were fishing three days a week. And, you know, it might have been Brisbane River Threads or it would have been Mud Island for Snapper or Harry's for Snapper or whatever it was, you know. Yeah. Um, Wyvern well, O for Bass. You know, we kind of just did whatever we wanted to do. And to be honest, we, with the Lewis side of things, we never had. I guess the best of everything in terms of we wanted, we knew we could make them different, we knew we could make them better. We used to change all the hooks, we used to change all the rings, or not being rude to anyone, to all the competitors' lures, but we used to change everything to make them the way we wanted them. To okay. And then we got to that stage in our lives where we were just like, you know what, stuff this, let's just do our own. Okay. Um, and that's what we did. Uh, we started with a soft plastic for snapper, it was a flick tail, it was a four inch flick tail. Um, it's still one of our biggest selling lures in terms of snapper right now. Uh, for the Gold Coast and obviously around the bay and everything else like that. We went from there to a curl tail grub, a four inch curl tail grub that we liked for the Brisbane River, it was perfect. Um, I think we started off with about a thousand dollars. To okay. be honest, that's how we started the business. Is that what, the lures are worth? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no li literally we started off with a thousand dollars. Oh, like small package from Real small packaging. You guys have got no idea like in terms of how, how many late nights we used to sit there and we used to barcode, we used to sit there and stick yeah. all the printing. Like we'd go to the printer and there'd be this black package, it was the worst, it was terrible. Absolutely, like, we were way, way, way behind everybody else. And yeah. we knew that, right? And yeah. we knew it was gonna take time to do that, but we're very lucky we had a, a few individual stores that supported us. Uh, I'll say one, the first one actually was Paulie from Maribar, complete angler. Okay. Um, really good friend of mine, lovely bloke, and he was probably our first guy that actually supported us. And he started from there, and then everyone kind of got Where's Maribar, sorry? Uh, north, just about three hours north. Of okay. Yeah. okay. But yeah, lovely bloke, good store, everything else like that. But yeah, that was kind of where it started. Yeah. And then we kind of seen the picture of where we wanted to go. And then in terms of product side of things, we kind of, 
we're still using everybody else's because we only have the soft plastics. Yeah. So then we kind of went, well, you know what, let's do a bot, let's do a soft plastic bot, let's, you know, let's do a swim bait. And we kind of just went from there and we're, and then now we pretty much don't use anyone else's product. Okay. Uh, we've got millions of different products from, you know, soft plastic frogs to little 1.8 rib, rib candies, little blades for bass. Kind of, we've customised it to what we want now. Um, obviously, we're still growing the range. Sure. Absolutely, of course we are, but, you know, that's kind of where we're at at the moment, I guess. So, you know, started from $1,000 to now having, well, we had up to about 80 stalls. Yeah. Um, regularly, we supply about 50 stalls around Australia, so, which is pretty awesome. Okay, okay. Um, well, actually, you know, I wrote all this whole list of questions to ask. Can we have a beer now? Can we, can we have a sip? Yeah, right. Right. yeah. Have a sip. Cheers. Yes, um, so with Shed Lures, right, so what do you actually see in the future for Shed Lures? Like, um, Shed Lures, I mean, when I say Shed Lures, I obviously mean Outlands. Shed Lures, yep. um, Shed Lures, um, Well, obviously, the exact depth rate, is, it's done really well all around Australia, yeah. to be honest. You know why I love the exact depth rate? Um, they are value for money, they are relatively good, like, you know, I know Shane Dix is the best, but I think they're relatively good, they're not shit, they're actually really good. Um, but I love it because in big spool. So when a customer like coming from us from a tackle store, when a customer comes with a custom reel, yeah, yeah. Uh, most break they you know they sell in packets of two hundred or three hundred meters, right? But in, except that if your reel just takes three hundred and twenty six point nine meters, you can buy three hundred and twenty six by nine meters. We actually sell it by the length, and I actually yeah. to be honest, the quality is pretty good. Like it's not bad, you know, it's pretty good. I most of my customers use that and um, it's, it's pretty good of course there's better things out there and there's worse things out there yeah. but to be honest i would rate it out of 10 maybe like a six six and a half so that, you know what i mean yeah. but i don't I, my, yeah, my highest yeah, right yeah my, 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 i don't rate anything but i'm just saying yeah. it's not a bad it's not a bad line you know like seven is pretty good bro yeah, seven is can good. we get like can we get shane to tell us more about yeah, his line i'll tell him a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but um, yes. he doesn't sell it very well but so uh, in, um, in terms of the braid, I'll talk about the braid. Okay. We sell a lot of braid all around Australia. Yeah. Um, you know that. Yeah, um, yeah. And they sell heaps, obviously. Yeah. We sell it to most tackle worlds you yeah. know, um, around Australia. We sell it to a lot of complete anglers. Yeah, yeah. We sell it to a lot of independents, such as the Bay Yeah, tackles. because it is, it is really, really value sellable. Money. Value yeah. for money. It's really value for money, money yeah. but it's a fantastic braid. Yeah. So the difference in our braid, I guess, over a lot of others, mm. we didn't want to do the silky smooth. Mm. Everyone's done that, right? I fish a lot of pylons, I fish a lot of structure. Mm -hmm. The abrasive whole idea is abrasive resistance for me. Yeah. I didn't want the super smooth. You get a mm -hmm. nick on the braid, bang, you lose it. Yeah. You get a nick on this braid, it's still, still super thin in terms yeah. of lighter sizes. As you go up, you know, obviously it gets thicker like any yeah. braid does, right? But in terms of strength value, we underrate our braid. I think for the, the, I mean, this is my opinion. Yeah. I think for exact that, yeah. for what you pay, mm -hmm. it is very good value for money and it's very hard to beat in the market. And that's why we do it. Yeah. And that's to be honest, we don't make a lot of money for it. We're not aiming to. Yeah. You know, it's the McDonald's series, the fries. That's what it was all about. You yeah. Know, it's the yeah. bread and butter. That was what the yeah. was with that. And to be honest with you, we are working on a new range in terms of a braid, a bit of a higher end of braid. Okay. But that's kind of down the future. You know, okay. to be honest, and that'll be single coated colors and stuff like that. Will yeah. be completely different to what we do with these. Yeah. But there's honestly nothing wrong with it. You know. But obviously, you can buy. Like we sell really expensive bread. There's like you know, two hundred dollars for hundred meters. You know, but. I'm not saying like this is like not good, it's like for what you pay is probably the best value for money yep. performance wise, you know? And we agree, we do yeah. so, and that's why we did it. Yeah. You know, we found other braids that we were using on the, in the market and we were, we were using Daiwa, AccuDef, and yeah. we tried all of them, you know, from Fireline all the way up over yeah. a 15 year period. And to be honest with you, we, they all had their negatives and they all had their positives. Yeah. And that's why we've done this. Oh, to be honest, when you first showed me the braid, I was yeah. pretty skeptical. Yeah. But how much have we bought? We bought quite a lot, you know? Yeah. I reckon probably close to, yeah, I don't know, maybe four, five hundred thousand meters. Yeah, you know, we'll so, so, you know, we, it's really, really good braid that we never actually have much returns, to be honest, no. if any. If any, yeah. 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 So Look, across Australia, I know of two. So, <laughs> two returns. Two returns. Oh, how many meters? Um, well, we're averaging about three to five hundred thousand meters okay. a month, so, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the question again. Yeah. I guess um, I track. Yeah. yeah. That's obviously our, our future in yep, terms yep. of the range side of things. Okay. Plans. Yep. In terms of shads, we will grow the range to what we want to grow it to. Okay. Uh, we are looking at doing back to what we're actually really good at and the brim side of things. We've got a brim range and, and a bass range that we are doing yep. uh, in the moment. So there's a few different molds and stuff like that that we're working on with them, which will be pretty cool. Okay. Um, it'll be good to get back to that stuff because we do enjoy it. I actually fished the brim couple for the first time in a long time. Did you win? No, it's kind of, <laughs> I, I, choked, rusty, yeah. I choked on day two actually. I was coming second after day one, but okay. yeah, I choked on day two, had no issues, but that's what Anyway, 
let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, I still can't get over it now. But yeah. No. Um, but yeah, no. In terms of uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, in terms of the, the, the shads range, obviously now most people know what we have. We have a blade from our smaller side of things. We we focus on our vibration lures and then our plastics. That's pretty much what we focus on. Um, fishing for jacks down the Gold Coast. Fishing for snapper offshore. Oh, the jacks. The jacks are the one lure that really sells really well and. We get a lot of feedback is those prawns, eh? Yeah, tough prawns. Tough prawn, yeah. Everybody loves them. Yeah, they are that really. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so the the, um, color there. Uh, sorry, this the is color. yeah. This is something that sells really well in our shop. Yeah. Um, and then you obviously got you know your paddle tails such as you know your three swimmer shads there and yeah. mullets. The bigger version for the barra and obviously the jack boys as well. That mullet color, everyone seems to love that. Yeah. Um, and then you got a slim version, still hollow as well, which is the whole idea of them. Uh, just to get that big wobble, that big vibration through the lure, the whole big paddle through it. So, as you can see there. Um, but the cool thing about the tough ones, and look, the reason why we use them so much is one, they're durable as. So in terms of that, they're, they're really stretchy. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're durable, you know, in terms of they pop as well. So, through the water column. Look. Yeah, so they're durable, uh, but they pop as well. So, oh, cool. it's got a pr pretty cool little noise. Uh, but we do them in multi packs, which is pretty cool for most fishermen, to be honest. Yep. Because when you're new, you don't really know what colours you're going to use. Works, what doesn't yeah. work. So we made it a bit simpler for everybody, give them one of each and they can decide what they've got to use after yeah. that. So good for the tackle stores too because pretty easy to sell that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, that's probably, I guess, the biggest thing. Um, in terms of our offshore market, which is what Nathan and I mainly focus a lot on, and we have done for the last couple of years, uh, fishing our vibration lures and one of our new ones now, which is we're pretty excited about, which is our uh, flick tail vibes. So, yeah. Oh, I love that, man. I just, uh, I've just got my shipment, we just got a shipment in. Yeah. What, yesterday? Yes, I am. Yesterday or something yeah. like that in yeah. uh, Underwood, so we're still getting this stuff coming to our shop, obviously. Yep. And um, So they're pretty cool. They're, they're soft really, vibe. really cool, soft vibe. I think yep. they will kill trannies and jewies in the Brisbane River for sure. 100%. Snapper, for sure. For yeah. sure, yep, yep. I took them on the weekend and, you know, filled so, around the um, So one thing, uh, I mean, I'll try not to push the shop in this show, but one thing I have to say is we have one of the biggest range of uh, shed vibes in Definitely. The Gold Coast. Awesome. So yeah. for all you Gold Coast um, people that want to really fish with this kind of stuff and find it really, really hard to drive to Brisbane, um, we have yeah, one exactly. of the yeah. biggest range around. And it's still growing. So, um, And yeah. the thing is, well, is that obviously the versatility of the range now. And that's what we're trying to, to be with, you know, exactly. something like a frog that we, we never ever had, you know, something like that that we've now brought into the range. There's heaps of different stuff that we're planning on doing. And, you know, it all takes time at the end of the day. Um, but in terms of the plastic range, you have every lure. So oh yeah. In terms of the shouts, so yeah. which is really really cool. In terms of the vibe, you have yeah. one of the vibes. Um, so. Like coming from us, we like to um, we like to support the the smaller the yeah. smaller people. Like uh, I mean, contrary to what everybody thinks, that I'm a very hard person to work with. I always open my doors to, as you know, yeah. to the smaller people, and I always support the small boys as much as I can. Yeah, of course. Um, <coughs> obviously. Um, like, we, like I said before, we had our differences when we first started, yeah, but we're like best of friends now. Yeah. And uh, it's really, really great to see that um, Shed has actually grown so much through that, yeah. the two or three years that we've been working together. And that's the thing too, yeah. you know, we, uh, obviously we obviously support you guys, you support us, and that's how it works with any in the industry and any business. Yeah. Um, the, the more support you guys help us, the more that we can get out there and help you guys yeah. as well. So uh, we appreciate obviously what you guys have done. Obviously, if you just open up your second store, which is pretty awesome. Um, pretty stressful. Pretty stressful. That's yeah. why you did the hair. That's it. Been life crisis. It's been dropping. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the craze. That's um, it. Yeah. I'm soon. Don't worry. Yeah. Probably won't get that hairstyle. You you you're making fun of me. You're yeah. not going to be invited back, bro. That's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I was number two. Remember? <laughs> it's fine. I'm still number one. Yeah. Um, but no. Look, it's um, obviously yeah. The whole idea for us is obviously to work with you guys. Yeah. Um, the more that we can help you, the more that we can adapt. The more that we yeah. can make. And you know what? I think it's uh, I think it's uh, people with brands with this kind of mentality. Yeah. Um, that will actually, you know, not only grow us as shops, but also grow the community, you yeah. know, and like, like I, I do this for me, don't get me wrong, but I also yeah. do this for the community, you know, so, the everybody knows, the everybody price. knows Shed as chain Shed, you know, but nobody actually know you as a person, like I know you as a person, yeah. so I also like to take this opportunity and this live talks to actually put a personal, yeah. um, a touch. you know, touch to the people that are actually yeah. in the industry that have been working hard in years, for the last few years, trying to build this industry for all of us to enjoy. You know? yeah, absolutely. So, and, no, it's good. You know, uh, in terms of you, obviously, mm -hmm. my turn to interview now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No. But in terms of obviously what you, we're trying to achieve, and obviously if we do well, you, you do well. Yeah, yeah, and just like us. Like, you know, if we do well, you do well. Exactly. You know, everybody else, yeah. It's so, another question I want to ask you is um, 
So you've been in the industry for a while. What do you no hate? Years, yeah, no years. Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you hate about this industry? And I'm going to ask you later. What do you actually? Uh, what yeah. I hate about it. I yeah. guess the chatter. To be honest. Okay. Like, yeah. The chatter is what I don't like about it. Okay. Um, people bag people and all that kind of stuff. It's not something like we didn't know each other, but we hated each other. Yeah, that's right. You know, until we met each other and we actually had a decent conversation with each other yeah. and worked out what you're actually yeah. about and what I'm about. Yeah. You know, we're very similar in terms of what we call. We're actually yeah, the same like people. You're just white. I'm just yellow. Yellow. Oh, kind of like brown. Yeah. 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 Kind of but yeah, we're actually very similar. Very similar in the same type of mentality. And look, yeah. um, I think the more of that stuff that gets out there, the more the more that people know me, the more the people know you, okay. the more support that you get, the more support we get. That's yeah. what it's all about, to be honest. Yeah, like I told you, like uh, you called me when we opened the second shop, yeah. and you said, oh, I've been good job, you know, like, you know. Uh, and I said, I actually said, where's my $5,000 order? What? $5,000 <laughs> order. But, uh, That's what I said. Um, but I told you, Shane, as we grow bigger, yeah. You know, hopefully Absolutely. we can you can join you can jump onto a bandwagon and we can grow bigger together. Yeah. But you know, that's the whole point of any business is to grow together as partners. Kind of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So what do you? What do I you love about it? Yeah. What do you love about it now? Uh, I love to be able to customize the lure to suit what I want to do. Okay. With, yeah. In terms of if it doesn't buy like I want it to buy, I can change it. Okay. If I want to put different hooks on it, I can put heavy duty hooks. The one thing that we wanted to do with Shad was make it affordable. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. We didn't want to put a price tag like some people do. We're yeah. not interested in doing that. We you know, we think everything that we do is reasonable. Um, it's affordable for any fisherman, good, young, old, it doesn't matter. Um, but we want to make it quality from the day dot. So everything that we do, we test it, we get it, we send it to the boys, we send it to everybody from a variety of different species, you know. I just sent the soft vibes down to Chris Cleaver. He's been tested. Oh, Chris, yeah, from yeah. Shimano. Ben used to work for Shimano. Yeah, ex Shimano yeah. guy, but he's fished with every soft vibe under the market. Yeah. You know, he's fished with every single one. So I've sent him some down throwing. I've sent him to the boys in Mukai. I've sent him to everybody kind of thing. You know, earthen in Brisbane River, chasing okay. threadies. Yeah. You know, I've given them to all the different guys. So the whole idea of it is because I want the, want the feedback from all of them in yeah. terms of the versatility of what they're catching, what they can use out of it. Yeah. Then I can customize it and change things if I need to. Okay. So one of the biggest things was the tail uh, in terms of it. So uh, our flick tails have been around, like I said, our very first ever lure. And what we wanted to do was get the whole concept was to do a flick tail soft bob. Now there's had plenty of fork tail vibes turned around the opposite way and everything else like that. They're a vibration lure, that's what happens, right? Yeah. But in terms of this, we've gone through a heavy duty wire okay. the whole way through. So there's no hooks going to break out. In terms of the hook quality, they're, they're next level. They are super, super, super strong, super good rings. And in terms of the plastic, well, to be honest, I don't think there's any other plastic on the market or any vibe on the market that's actually as durable and as tough as that. Okay. So, which is really, really cool. In terms of the actual lure, it swims dead straight, straight on the drop, which is perfect, which is what you want. So when you are fishing for snapper offshore and they do chase it and they do hit it on the drop, bang, it's vibrating on the way down and it's ready. When you're hopping, it's only really lift, a really, really subtle lift. You don't have to give it the big rip to get into vibes. Like, to be honest, some of our other vibes that we did when we first started, Remember, we got better, and that's yeah. what it was. Oh, no, but that's with any company. That's with any company, you yeah. know. Um, we did a soft vibe when we first, 70 mil soft vibe, a little, you know, with a soft wire construction the whole way through it. And you know, to be honest with you, we discontinued because we, we weren't getting... We, we weren't happy you, yeah. No, nah, we were breaking them, you know, you catch a big fish on them, yes you were, but yeah. you know, it might have been two or three fish. Where yeah. with these now, we've tested them for the last six months, and 10, 12, 15 fish on them, and they're still good, yeah. still vibrating, which is really, really cool. So. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, I guess in a nutshell, that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Um, that's what I love about it. You know, I love being able to use what I want to use. I love being able to use only my lures, which is And cool. obviously love what you want to use and share with the people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Teach yeah. them, uh, show them exactly what you can do with them. Um, okay. That's one thing. Another, that's what I give you credit for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, you take a lot of different people out of the Brisbane River. Yeah. You know. On the River, Brisbane, uh, Brisbane River Taxi. Taxi. <laughs> I was going to say King. <laughs> nah, 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 not the King. Yeah, but, Another thing I want to ask you, right? You know, we got a lot of young and yeah. aspiring um, officials in um, that hopefully is watching us. How many people do we actually have watching? Fifteen. Oh, nice. What's not too bad for the first show. First show. It's, it's, been up to, it's been up to twenty, but okay. then Shane started talking. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we got a lot of young boys that are picking up fishing, and of course, young girls. Yeah. What? And every young kid has one aspiration, right? Is to be a pro star. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. so I want you to actually list out what do you look for in a pro staff, all right? Yeah. Or what criteria or what do you expect a pro staff or these young people yeah. to maybe just 
you know, absorb so they can actually grow their fishing to be able to be recognized, okay? So oh, the, I guess the first thing I'll say, right, if you want to be a pro star from any brand, not just Shad's, anyone's brand, go and buy the lures. Go and actually use them first before sending a message out or an email out or a Facebook message out, I want free lures. Go and use them first, get some photos, do something like that, test them to see if you like them. You know what, you may not even like them. You may be sponsored or you may not be sponsored, but you might not actually like the lures that you're using. So yeah. um, definitely come and use them first before you do that. Uh, in terms of a message, you know what, send a few photos through. Like We don't have, as you know, we don't have a big pro staff. We, yeah. we never have, to be honest, we've had five guys pretty consistently. Don't get me wrong, there's heaps of people that we've looked after over the years. And, and that's what we do, but that's just the industry, that's what it is. But the first thing I would say to any young guy, go out there and use the lures, you know, buy a pack of tough prawns, go back, you know, go and use them, test them out, and see what fish you catch on them. If you like them, send them a message, say hello. Nathan will obviously answer them, I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd obviously check it as well, but you know, uh, definitely go and use the lures first, 100%. You know, see if you do like them, see if you do actually want to be able to use them, see if you can catch fish on them. Okay. Yeah, very good point because like we always get emails, right? 100%. Yeah. Oh, I love Imar, I love Feed, I love this, I love that, yeah. I want to be a sponsor, but have you ever tried that? Have you ever used the yeah. photos? Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. so the first point. question I ask is where's the photos? Where's yeah, first, first good point, you really have to, you know, I've never actually thought of this question myself, but you know, he says a really good point, buy the lures. You know, you have to give before you can actually receive, right? 100%, absolutely. See, you know? It's loyalty at the end of the day with any brand, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, with any brand. So, you know, you want to be a pro staff, um, a good tip. Go and buy some lures. Go and buy some lures, invest in your own lures first, show the manufacturer what you can do with the lures or what you can catch, and then... They come talk to us. That's right, that's right. So, a very good tip. Uh, oh, we're almost up to a half an hour. Let me see. Yeah. What are, is there any questions anybody asked, Scotty? No, it's been a bit quiet. Has it been quiet? It's because you talk. I know. Uh, no questions? You guys can ask any questions, like honestly, like if he's married, he's got a sister, apparently he's got two sisters. I do have two sisters. Yeah. Or oh, three, technically Nathan. Uh, no, sorry. That's yeah. One brother, two sisters. Anybody asking any questions? No. Nah. Nah. Humphrey's gone, he must be working. I thought he would have asked something. <laughs> okay, so Easy. anyway, thanks. Um, no worries. Thanks. Thanks for the beer. Shane, yeah, for, for, the time. for, you know, coming and doing the show for us. Um, Shad Lewis, we are, we carry them in our shop. Yep. Um, the range is always growing. Um, so thank you so much, bro, for no last time. minute. Randy canceled last minute. I have to call Shane and within 10 minutes of the Ivan, I'm coming. So lifesaver. No worries, thank time. you so much. Uh, next week, I'll probably have... Uh, might, be, might be Randy, yeah. No, Randy is going away to the oh, mines, right? right? So um, next week, I'll probably have um, Steve Ward from Gold Coast, uh, one of my pro staff coming to do a talk for us. I think it's on a Tuesday night actually. So hopefully everything runs well. We don't have to change the time and everything. Very nice. And um, yeah, we'll hear from people anyway. Okay. So All right. Thanks for Cheers. saving my life. And I'll see you guys back in the shop. See you later.